Hey everybody, Kestiva back with another example today. Um, before we start, I just want to remind everyone, um, you know, with everything going on in the world today, with the pandemic, uh, everyone confined to their house, um, although school is winding down, um, I hope this is helping out uh, everyone that it possibly can, make your lives a little bit more simple. Um, I know it was always pretty stressful when you had questions or didn't understand something going through your engineering courses. So hopefully these are helping you and answering any questions you might have. Um, but as always, if you do have any questions, um, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Um, as always, uh, like and subscribe. And uh, if you could recommend to a classmate or heck, even a coworker or someone who's just generally interested in uh, structural engineering. All right, let's jump into it today. So actually we have um, another request um, by a subscriber. Um, so let's see, uh, Osman, uh, they actually asked if we could do, um, so piggybacking off of the wood beam example that we had done a while back, they'd like to now see an example of a wood column. So um, Osman, this is for you. Um, so today, wood column example. All right, so what we have first is some loading criteria as well as uh, kind of some tributary um, area defined for this column. So we have a six by six Doug fir column and it's picking up um, in plan view a tributary area of five feet by five feet. It's supporting a dead load of 15 PSF for the floor load, if you would, and then for the live load it's 60 PSF and that is um, an office loading. And, and this criteria, 15 PSF, to give you a quick background, that's all the weight of the actual structure and the decking and the, maybe it's two by, um, you know, or some open web joist, and then with some, um, some plywood decking on it, diaphragm decking, um, as well as, you know, carpet, finished floor, tile, anything like that. Um, and also includes any mechanical or plumbing that might be hanging from below that's mounted. So that 15 PSF, that's why that's usually rounds off to about that, that value in the working uh, field. Um, and then the 60 PSF that comes from the um, ASCE 716 um, for live loading criteria. So there's a big list in there. We've talked about that a little bit beforehand, so I won't go any further than that. That's where those values come from. Um, so we are going to be talking about simple columns um, and there's generally three um, types of wood columns. There's, there's more than that, but generally um, you have a simple column, which is defined in NDS 3.6. You have a spaced column, which is NDS 15.2 goes into it. And then you have what's called a built up column, which is NDS 15.3. Um, we are just going to be doing a simple column today. You also have, you know, tapered columns where it's uh, thicker at the bottom and, and skinnies up towards the top or vice versa if you had like a weird kind of architectural column. And you also have uh, round columns and tapered round columns. So there's, there's more in there, but these are the three main ones um, in the, I have it right here next to me, in the NDS. So depending on what type of column you have, you want to go to these sections and start from there. But we're going to go to 3.6. We already talked before, our tributary area is just 5 by 5, which is 25 square feet. Um, so we need to know what's the demand on our column. Um, as always with wood, if you've seen my earlier videos, ASD, always for wood design. Um, you can do both ASD or LRFD design, but ASD is really going to simplify your life. Um, for wood, so we're using ASD. Um, again, per the ASCE 716, we're gonna grab our load um, criteria, and this is gonna be our worst load case. It's gonna be 1.0 dead plus 1.0 live. So you plug in your dead and live from before. Nothing changes, so pretty much, so literally they're just added together. So we know we have a combined loading of 75 PSF. The axial load, or that load, if you look at a section view of this column, coming down and loading the column, that's what axial is, so that axial load. You can either have tension pulling or compressive forces pushing downward. Um, in our case, we have a compressive load on our column. That's just your trib area associated with the column 
times your loading criteria um, um, force. Um, so distributed force, that is. So 75 PSF times 25 square feet gives you um, 1,875 pounds of axial force. So that's our loading criteria defined. So that's the demand. Um, we need to find out what the uh, capacity of our column is. Um, so in section here, so this is, or an elevation, you could say, we have story to story height of 12 feet, we'll call it. And it's un this column is unbraced all the way up. So that means there's nothing stabilizing this on either side of it all the way up. It's just, it's connected at the base, it's pinned at the base and pinned at the top, that's it. Um, and you'll see that'll affect us later. So now that we have our demand, we need to figure out our, like I said, our capacity of our column. Well, first we need to get some criteria. So we know that it's a Doug fir based on the DF that I specified above. So that stands for Doug fir. So we need to go into our, so we have our NDS, but then we also have, like we've talked before, our NDS supplement. And again, I'm going a little quick here um, through codes and stuff, but that's because I've gone through this before in our wood beam example. So if you go back into my channel um, and look up that video, I go a little more into depth about what these are for. And I also talk specific, I have videos specifically talking about just the codes. So yeah, it seems a little quick. Just head back there and start from the beginning. But for all you more advanced um, who've been with me a little longer, we're gonna jump in. So I have it tabulated, so you can see, I like to tab it with two to four inch wood and then five inches and up wood criteria, and then I have decking. So we have a six by six column, so we're gonna flip to that tab. And, but if you don't have it tabbed, that just takes me to table 4D. And you'll see it says it in the title here. So design values for visually graded lumber, five by five and larger, so that's us. Um, Doug Fur, we wanna head down to, so Doug Fur. And then I've decided to go with a select structural. And you'll notice um, you have beams and stringers section, then you have posts and timbers section. So this is us, we're posts. Select structural, we're gonna go across. And first, the way that columns are loaded is we are gonna be checking for F prime C, which is your compression parallel to grain. Um, and that's because in this column here, traditionally, you know, you say this is just straight up tree, all of the rings are going like this, which means if the load is coming downward, all of your grain is, is vertically like this. Looks like that. So that your load is parallel with the grain. Um, perpendicular to the grain, as shown here with this symbol. That is more for if you have, here, I'll draw it over here. If you have like a seated beam um, and then you have like a plate here and that beam is sitting and applying an axial load at its bearing end down this plate because that's because now all your grain looks like this, but your compressive force is going parallel to it. So that's more for that condition, but we are doing or is perpendicular, excuse me, but we're doing parallel to grain. So F prime C, we go back to our section, posts and timbers, and there's two different sections and that's just based on the grading rules agency. We're gonna do WC LIB. Um, I won't get into that right now, but either are fine. Um, select structural, we're gonna move across. That gets us 1,150 PSI. All right, so that we've put down. That's for compression parallel to grain and select structural. Now, we're gonna get out of our supplement and we're gonna get to go into the main NDS. We're gonna go to the sawn lumber section, chapter four. We're gonna go to table 4.3.1 and we need to define and figure out all of our um, factors. Um, so F prime C is what we need to get to. So right now we have FC, but we need to find all of our factors that apply. So CD, CM, CT, CF, CI, CP. All right. Uh, CD is 1.0, and that's because the office live load controls this loading criteria because it is, if we all remember, 
We're gonna go back towards the beginning. To table three point, uh, 2.3.2, .2, and the loading, the load within the load, um, uh, the loading criteria equation, whichever load, so this one we have live load and this one we have dead load, whichever one of those loading criteria gets us a larger CD value, we get to use that. So our live load, so if you had like wind in this case, wind is um, a low duration effect, you know, you have gusts of wind. So that actually gets you a 1.6 factor, which actually increases the strength um, that you get from your column or your, your wood member. Um, but the longer that a load is anticipated to be applied, um, the, the lower factor you get to apply to it. So in this case, we have a live load, so we get to use 1.0 versus the other one that we have as a dead load, which is 0 0.9. So we get to use 1.0 because it's larger. So that's 1.0. Um, CM is our moisture factor. Um, this is, we're gonna assume it's an interior column. So moisture will be controlled with HVAC systems and all of that. So um, it'll be a condition space. So 1.0 there. Uh, C sub T is um, your temperature factor. Again, indoors, so no extreme temperatures. It'll be condition space, 1.0. You have a CF factor. Um, which we'll calculate below. You can see it a little bit. I'm going to hide it from you, though. You have your insizing factor, which um, that is 1.0. Um, I won't get into that right now. Almost always your insizing is, is 1.0. That's if they do, if they, it's my understanding that they trim up the wood um, and kind of, uh, you know, I'm not actually specifically sure. I'd have to look at the definition if it applied, but it almost never does if it's just typical lumber that you're using. Um, but you can always go to the CI and definition and see what specifically what it calls for. I should do that. Um, and then you have CP. And what CP is, if we go back, is your column stability factor. So right here, CP. So we have 1.0 for everything except for CF and CP. Well, CF is easy. That is in 4.3.6, and it's just defined by this equation. So we're going to plug in our D. So we know um, nominal uh, column is 6 by 6 that we're using, but the actual dimension is a 5.5 by 5.5. So, sorry, I'm shaking here. So we plug in 5.5 for our D, and we just plug it into the equation, and we go. And we know it needs to be less than or equal to 1.0. That's part of the equation. That comes out to 1.09, so you just use 1.0. So CF, 1.0. Good. CP is the harder one. We're going to go to the next page here. All right. So for CP, um, let me see if I can flip to it for us all. CP is in section 3.7 for solid columns, um, and that is defined by this honking equation here. Yeah, it's nasty. Um, so first, we need to find FCE with this equation, and in order to do that, we need a couple things. We need LE, and we need e, um, e min prime. So LE um, is... K, is um, is K E times L. And that K factor is 1.0 for a pin pin condition. Um, I say C and then I don't put anything, but that's actually back in the appendix. Um, let me see on the spot, I can go get it for us. Um, yes, okay, so in appendix G, that's this table here. Um, and we have a, this one, a pinned pin condition. And that's 1.0 for your KE value. All right, so that makes it easy. So LE just equals your length, which was 12 feet times KE, which is 1.0. Convert that into inches. That gets you 12 feet, which is 144 inches. Now we need L over D. L over D, because we need to make sure that that's less than 50 per that section um, of design code that we were just at that had the big equation. Um, 
So we plug that in, that's less than 50, we're good. E min, we're gonna go back to our sawn lumber chapter four and E min prime is what we need, which equals E min times these factors. Um, and then E min, and now it's, it's a process here. You go back to your supplement and you go to your Doug fur and you go to your post, select structural, and you go to your E min. We come down, that's 580,000 PSI. So that we're gonna take and we are going to apply all of our factors that to, uh, told us, which is again, back over here in chapter four, CM, CT, CM is moisture, T is temperature, those are both 1.0, incising was 1.0, and C, capital T, is buckling stiffness factor, that's just for trusses though, so that's also 1.0. So E min prime just equals E min in this case. So good, that also makes it easy, boom. Um, now we have everything for FCE. Plug it all in, gets you 695 PSI. Now we need FC star. FC star is just FC times all of your coefficients except for CP, which is what we're solving for. So everything else just was 1.0. So that's just 1,150 PSI. Little trick to do here before we go to our big final equation is do take FCE over FC star. That's 0 0.605 when you take these two. Um, because that that equation, that little equation is scattered throughout this big equation. So it's good to just have that factor instead of doing it over and over and over again. So now you have CP and the last thing we need is C. Well, C is designated per, like I said, back in chapter 3.7. It says right here, gives you all your different C values. We are using saw and lumber. So C is just 0 0.8 for us. Now we have everything. Plug everything into the big equation. That actually dumps you out of a CP factor of 0 0.5. So it halves your capacity that you're allowed to use for that column strength. So it's pretty brutal. Um, and that's because it makes sense because we have a 12 foot column that's um, un unbraced um, laterally all the way from top to bottom. So that's what I was talking about before. I can get for you guys. And here, just totally unbraced all the way up. So if we braced it at some points moving down, that would significantly jump up the capacity that we're allowed to use for that column. Um, finally, we just need the area of our column cross section, which is five and a half by five and a half. That's 30.25 square inches. And then we know the axial load that we calculated before, which is 1,875 pounds. Divide that by the cross sectional area in inches squared. And that gets you 62 pounds per square inch PSI. You compare that to your FC prime, which again is just FC times all of your factors that we, um, that were defined in chapter four. All of them are 1.0 besides CF, which is 0 0.5 from the big equation. Uh, sorry, <laughs> CP from the big equation, CP, CP, CF is 1.0. Um, and then um, that gets us, so um, C, FC prime gets us 575 PSI. And you compare that PSI to your demand PSI, and it's far greater than, than uh, the demand. Um, so you know that you're okay. So this six by six column can handle the load that we've defined. Um, and another common um, practice that you'll, you'll see in, in professional engineering is someone asking for the demand capacity ratio, um, D over C. So demand is what was loading your member and then uh, capacity is how strong your member is. So D over C um, is 62 over 575, which gets you 0 0.107. And that's it. Thanks everyone, until next time.